Uh, first up, we have Carlos Garcia, who is our senior technologist here at IMR, and Carlos will be presenting on AI in Action, which is about artificial intelligence applications that are currently being used in manufacturing. So welcome, Carlos. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, everyone, for attending. AI is the new electricity. Uh, this is a sentence from Andrew Eng. Andrew is the founder of Google Brain, of the Coursera platform, and many other things. He's one of the brightest minds in the planet in machine learning and, and AI. And we all know that AI is important now for manufacturing. We know that AI is impacting how manufacturing works. And in particular, AI is improving the efficiency of manufacturing. But personally, I would say that data is the new electricity. Data flows like electricity, and you need data for AI to actually act. In fact, there are surveys that show how only those organizations that are pretty advanced in their digitization, that are major in analytics, are able to extract all the benefit from AI. You obviously need the data. You also need the tools. You need the skills. You need the support from the company. I'm going to start with this presentation from Capgemini. This was a survey they did over 300 manufacturers all over the world. They have uh, in this survey manufacturers from four different manufacturing segments, automotive, industrial manufacturing, consumer products, and aerospace and defense. And as you can see on the graphic on the right, the two main the two top contributors to, to the AI applications today in manufacturing are maintenance and quality. Together, for more than half of the applications today of manufacturing. And that's not surprising. We have been using analytics and AI for a long time for quality defects and for, and for maintenance. So now I will start giving you some examples of how this is working today. In, in with real world examples. I will start with quality assurance, which is about detecting defects using automated visual inspection. Um, the pipeline starts here with the machine vision. The cameras are able to detect some flaws in the parts and the products that are too small for a human eye to detect things like very small scratches or the quality of paint. But after that, we have the machine learning. In this case, deep learning is the, what is usually uh, employed here, which is telling us, is this picture showing us something wrong or is everything as, as it should be? As you can see in the, this picture on the right, uh, in this case, AI detected a missing part, a missing screw here and small defect. Uh, advantages of this are obviously this accuracy, also the speed could be a, an important benefit of AI here. And a real world name using this would be Bridgestone, the Japanese tire manufacturer. They are using this examination system, they call it, to improve the quality of the tires manufacturing. This system provides automatic control of the quality assurance. And it does that by using 480 different variables or different quality items to check the, the quality. They uh, claim that they achieved uh, more than 15% improvements on uniformity when compared to the conventional manufacturing process. And this examination tool is actually using the information in near real time to control the production processes. Moving to predictive maintenance. Now, this is about preventing unplanned downtime by using machine learning. It does that in two main ways. The first one would be by predicting when something, when some component is going to fail, giving you time to take measures to avoid that, or at least minimize the downtime or the loss, the loss of throughput. The second way it can help us is by decreasing the need for those planned maintenance that, that we have on the machines. We all follow the manual and we do a planned maintenance every six months. That's okay, but most of the times it's not needed. So AI can help us to understand when that plane maintenance is really needed or not, and that would minimize the downtime again. Two main real world examples here. One is from Volvo, the car manufacturer. 
they have a system analyzing over 1 million events in their, in their line every week. Things like pressure, like temperature, and this is allowing them to assess their impact and break them. In particular, they, they say uh, it helps to predict when an air compressor is going to crack in advance before it really cracks. Second one is from General Motors. They have a different system here where they have cameras mounted on top of the assembly robots. And they are continuously taking pictures and spotting signs and indications of failing robotic components. And they claim they, this system can detect 72 instances of component failure over 7,000 robots before the fail failure actually occurs. A third example is generative design, automated prototyping. This is about AI helping manufacturers in the design stage. Uh, the human brain is, is amazing and it can, it can do so many things. And one of the most amazing things is that the human brain is able to select two or three options among millions of different options or, or solutions to a, to a problem you have. We are very good at, at, at selecting the most promising initial uh, options. But sometimes that's avoiding other solutions that could bring a better, uh, better solution. So to give you an, an example of how, how that works, I will use the example of the Go game. If you are into AI just a little bit, you probably heard about this in the last couple of years, basically. Um, Go is an ancient Chinese game, more than 2,000 years old. And just a couple of years ago, Google's DeepMind actually created an AI that beat uh, Lee Sedol here on the right, the human champion. Now, the interesting thing here about this is that this AI didn't learn from humans. Basically what happened is uh, the designers gave the AI, these are the rules of the game. This is the board. Now go to that room and learn to play by yourself. And it did learn to play in, in a better way and with superhuman ability compared to, to, to Lisa at all here. Uh, the interesting thing is it did that with tactics that have never, never been seen before. Uh, we have been playing Go for 2,000 years. Obviously, some tactics have been developed, like, like the openings in chess, for example. But Go was able, to, the Alpha Go, the program was able to come up with tactics that no one used before. It's a little bit like if, if you take the rules of the game, you take a board, you put them in a space shuttle, you send it to the stars, and some alien race then learn to play Go. They would probably learn, would play in a different way. And this is what's happening here. AI algorithms do not think like like we do uh, so they come up they can come up with solutions that we are not able to see and that's the, the interesting thing here and two examples two real world examples one is from general motors this dream catcher system um, they use this machine learning to create a new prototype for a seat belt bracket this resulted in a, a single piece design that is 40 percent lighter 20% stronger than the original eight component design. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Closer to us here in, in IMR, we work with Ramon Engineering to came up with an optim, optimum excavator hitch design for the additive process. Now additive manufacturing is a focus area for generative design as is drugs discovery, for example. And in this case in particular, you can see two pictures on the right. Um, uh, we Come, came up with a design that was uh, so a decrease in weight from 25 to 5 kilograms. Another important application of AI is demand forecasting, how to better plan our, our operations. Forecasting has been a um, focus area for AI for a long time. And uh, now organizations are using these models to predict changes in consumer demand. And that can help to make necessary changes in the production schedule and the raw material procurement and all along the supply chain. In particular, here the example is from Danone, the French multinational food manufacturer, where they use this machine learning system to improve the demand forecast accuracy. Um, they claim a 20% reduction in forecast error and 30% reduction in lost sales. But also interestingly, these, they say this also improves the planning between the different departments from sales, account management, supply chain, and finance. My last example about AI applications today is about self-learning, about how can we build machines or robots that are able to learn 
quicker than is possibly today new tasks or to adapt to changes in the tasks they have. That's today um, mostly a manual work of changing the program or the machine of the pro or, or the robot, but that takes time. So using reinforcement learning, which is one of the main three areas of machine learning also used in AlphaGo, we can improve that. So reinforcement learning is about learning by doing or by trial and error. Um, this example here is from Mitsubishi. Uh, they used this technology together with a simulator to, uh, to fast train a robot in a new task. And they claim we using this uh, technology, they use only 10% of the time to retrain, to adapt than the uh, original, uh, original program. So this AI technology learns and responds to changes in almost real time. Um, and just to end my presentation, just a couple of final thoughts here. Uh, it's, look, it's, it's very easy for, for people like me in a webinar like this talking to you to, to praise the AI and say AI is great. You need to use AI. You don't use AI, you will be left behind. Well, it's uh, more complex than that. First, as I stated at the beginning of my presentation, you need a certain level of uh, analytics maturity of digitization to be able to extract all the benefit from, from AI. Achieving a good ROI in AI projects takes time. Six months, 12 months will probably not be enough to really see the benefit of AI in your line. It takes purpose all across the organization and it takes investment. Uh, thank you. I wrote here a few references if you are interested in knowing more. And again, if you have questions or something more, you want something in more detail or something else that is not here, please contact us and we will be happy to create a new webinar for you. Thank you. Thank you.